On this video, I'm going to be going over a very important topic that I actually get a lot of requests about, and it's how to spot a fake Rolex. All right, so for Rolex, there's a lot of different models that they have, and there's a lot of different ones that are copied. I would say that the one that they do the best job on is the Submariner. It seems to be the one that gets the closest to look exactly like the real product. This particular example that I have here is a yellow gold sub. And I don't know about you guys, but the first thing that I spot right off the bat is the color. Right here with both of them in front of me, it's pretty easy to see which is the one that it is. Obviously, this one right here looking a little bit cheddar cheese gold is the one that in my opinion just shouts fake right off the bat. But to the untrained eye, that could be something that maybe they won't pick up, especially if they don't have it side by side. So the first thing that grabbed my attention when I actually saw the watch was the obvious color. I just feel like it's very sharp yellow, almost like it was ran over with a highlighter of sorts. But the thing is, I said, okay, well, let's just say that it's been sitting 100 million years in a safe, which would highly be unlikely considering it's a pretty modern watch. And maybe it's had some like oxidation and it kind of looks weird, whatever. You see that a lot with the old school Prezis. But then comes the weight. I mean, the weight is a dead giveaway. The second you grab it in your hand, this thing feels like it's made out of titanium compared to the other one. I mean, if we go ahead and weigh them side by side, you're gonna see the drastic difference. So right off the bat, we're going for the color. Then second was the weight. But let's see exactly what was the difference in weight. All right, so the obvious fake, when you put it on the scale, it comes in at 148 grams, 147 around there. Obviously way too light. When you put the gold one on, I mean, it's like a very big difference. It's at 221 grams. So it's a big difference because obviously gold is a lot denser and way heavier than stainless steel. And obviously this is not made out of the highest quality stainless steel, which is what Rolex uses. So my guess is obviously it's a stainless steel sub that they kind of use like a PVD coating of sorts and kind of just, in other words, gold plated it. Another thing that I want to point out is that all gold Rolexes, okay, all modern gold Rolexes, when you have the pins where the screws are for the removable links, they're not drilled all the way through. So on this side is the actual head of the screw, but on the reverse side, it's gonna be a smooth polish where the actual screw doesn't perforate all the way through. However, this gold Submariner clearly has the holes on the other side. Another red flag. You know, these are easy red flags that you guys can pick up at home and you don't have to be an expert like me that's touched hundreds and hundreds of these watches. There is no gold Rolexes where the bracelet, the pins where they pass all the way through. So you gotta keep that in mind. If you see a pinhole on both sides, that's a bad sign. So this particular thing might be a little bit harder to find on a stainless steel watch because the stamps that come on a stainless steel model are not the same as the gold but the gold one has very particular stamps. And the one thing you're gonna notice is they just don't look anything the same. Of course, they try to make them look very similar, but they don't, they're not the same stamp. The Rolex crown doesn't look right. And then there's of course the stamp of quality, which when you magnify it with the loop like this one, okay, you're gonna see that it's actually the head of a St. Bernard dog. You know, the original one is a very small stamp pressed into the gold that distorts the gold and leaves a perfect shape. However, the fake one is pretty much just a very superficial scribble with a laser edge. So remember, anything that's gold will always have the stamp of quality. And that's a good thing that you can loop and see it for yourself. So let's move on to something else, the end links. The end links on this watch are also a dead giveaway because when you look at them from the back on the solid gold version, you can actually see that the end link is made out of three pieces, the two outer pieces and the center link. This one here is all one solid piece. Again, another dead giveaway. Yes, you would have to know these things like I do and here side by side. But out of all of these, if you pick up at least three or four of them, the watch is definitely a fake. So here's a trick that I like to always do, and I actually do it on every watch. 
I'm gonna magnify it for you here on camera, but one of the things that I always look at is in the center of the hands in the dial layout, there's actually what appears to be like a rivet on the last hand that's on top, which is usually the seconds hand or the seconds for the chrono that has a very particular rivet that goes on there. That for me is always a dead giveaway. You have to see it with the loop, but man, it never fails, okay? The fake one looks like the cheapest rivet you can imagine with sharp edges, whereas the original always has a super smooth, polished, finished rivet. I love to use the rivet as a way to see if a watch is real or fake. Now, not to be confused with a butcher watchmaker that maybe perhaps ruined it, but again, these are kind of clues that you like to look at to piece the whole puzzle together. Another easy one for me is the pearl. These Submariners have a pearl, as they're called, at the 12 o'clock position on the rotating bezel. Always looks kind of funny. The first thing you'll notice on the original is that it usually has an even tone with the rest of the markers on the dial and the hands. Whereas the fake always looks always wider or it looks wider, you know, so the tone won't be right, the size won't be right, stuff like that. It also seems to be always taller when it's fake. Now look guys, I have a bunch of different things that are just different on this watch and we can go on this video for 30 minutes. You know, the clasp layout actually looks pretty good. Stampings are all wrong. Clearly it's just been gold plated, but the clasp actually looks pretty good, it's dead on. But a little one that I like to use that's always a shortcut on these fake Rolexes is the original, the bezel, actually sits on top of roller balls and springs. And it will always have a little bit of like a spring action, almost like you can push the bezel down a little bit. It will move very little, but it'll have a spring action. Fakes almost all the time are all the way down. There's no play. So that's one of the easiest ways that you can tell if these watches are real or fake without opening the movement. Obviously, when you open up the movement, there's gonna be a big surprise. This thing on the outside looks great, but the inside is janky. And don't ever let that be just a signifying sign because there has been cases, maybe not on this gold one, but perhaps on a stainless steel one where people have put a clone mechanism or perhaps even an older mechanism that maybe they pieced up at a cheap price to kind of make it feel like it's, you know, to kind of make it feel like it's original. People will go above and beyond to make these things happen. Now remember that some of these fake watches were puzzled together, not so a guy can wear them and flex on the Instagram and act like he actually has money or can afford when he doesn't, but sometimes it's more just so that they can rip somebody off and actually turn a profit out of these fake watches. Yeah, like honestly, the, the dial is, is pretty nice. The dial is very nice and it looks very, very good. And the bezel, the actual ceramic bezel insert is also pretty impressive. I mean, overall, I feel like the dimensions are almost spot on, okay? There's always gonna be little trails, but I'm quite impressed by the finish and the look of the hands, the dial, and the bezel insert. So pretty much if you follow some of these guidelines that I put out there, like I said, I can go on this for about an hour and a half because the differences are there and I see them. But you wanna use these quick little reference guides to kinda of piece it together. And remember, one thing for me won't ever tell me if the watch is fake. You have to have several of them that's gonna piece the puzzle together and really prove it to you. This one being gold for me, the easiest thing would be the color and the weight. There's no way that they can mimic that, however, there has been some watches where I don't know how, they did kind of weigh it down a bit and it was very similar. This one is a dead bust just on weight and color. But be careful out there when you're buying a watch from someone you don't know. And like the saying always says, buy the seller first, then buy the watch. So feel free to comment below on any things that you might have noticed on this watch. And don't forget to hit the notifications bell till it looks like this. And if you like this video, please like and share. Also, subscribe to our channel. My name is Eric, this is Watch Your Style.